Politico Politica. Politics for everyone. Welcome back to Political Politica with me, your host, Isabella Akinshaya. Before the break, we discussed new opposition, but now it's time for our politics and more segment where our guest, Jide Iji Makinwa, will be telling us about his journey into politics. So Jide, how did it all start, your political journey? Political journey started from the University of Lagos. There I was uh, an undergraduate, Faculty of Science. Um, you know, normal faculty elections, I was the vice president of my association. Then I felt there was more to give to the society. I went into what we call hall politics. In 1993, I was hall chairman of Jaja Hall. And um, being a hall chairman, you need to be able to galvanize the whole student populace in the hall to meet some particular needs in the hall. Um, whatever the needs of the people were, were the things we started out. Uh, the hall chairman represents the people, the occupants or the students in a particular hall. I was hall chair of Jaja Hall, so I represent Jaja hall, Jaja hall members in the parliament, whatsoever the parliament decides. So it started in your university days. Correct. What political ideologies have guided you since then? Politics has to be what we call a servant leader ideology. A servant leader ideology is a, an ideology where you don't show yourself to be more than every other person. You bring yourself to a level whereby you're able to relate with everybody. In, everybody in, where they just elected you to be their spokesman. So you have to be able to relate with the cult member, relate with the man in the in the faculty, the, the man that feels he knows it all. You relate with those on the ground, on the on the lower level. You relate with the traders. You relate with. So you're accessible across board. Correct. Okay. Now, why did you choose to contest under the Action Democratic Party? Early this year, I looked at the various parties, and I I felt things were not right. Most of us that went to school, most of us that graduated uh, from various universities, most of us that have gone out of the country, we see how things are wrong. And we, I felt, I can't sit down and watch Nigeria decay the way it is going. I looked at the ruling party, I found a lot of faults in what they are doing. I looked at PDP, I didn't see where I would fit into PDP's ideology. Basically, not straight as far as I'm concerned. So I looked for a party. I went to ADC, checked everything online before I decided to settle down on ADP. I actually walked into the headquarters in Lagos in Maryland and I just told them I wanted to be a member of this party. I believe in what your party is doing and I want to, to be a member. My initial plan was to sit down, be a member, watch the party, watch the ideologies for in 2023 before I run. But when we looked at everything happening, I felt there was a chance for me to run here this year and also make an impact. Why wait to 2023 when you can do it now? Being a member of this party, do you have anybody, maybe a godfather there or people that guide you or leaders, political people that have influenced your journey so far? I hate the idea of godfatherism. The party has a very, very flat uh, structure. We know each other, we debate issues, we come around, argue issues out on how, what we should do. Everybody has a say. It's unlike some other parties where uh, somebody speaks and everybody follows like, uh, like uh, let me not use the wrong word. But you have somebody that gives a, a free flow, you speak, you give your contribution, you discuss, and you discuss things that are credible. And that's why I decided to join the party. You see, I've looked, like I said, I've looked at every other party. You are not free to do things. You are not, you don't have your mind, you cannot talk freely. And I don't believe nowadays politics should be, you should be caged. They should tell you that 
uh, you can't contest now somebody is next in line you have to wait for five years this person has to run for two years why because he's anointed there's a godfather somewhere there's somebody bankrolling his campaign okay. I, my campaign is being bankrolled by my friends my old students bankrolled by people 500 naira to 200 naira 1000 naira this are, that's the way politics is. If you look at Bar Barack Obama, the same way. One dollar, two, two dollar, unlike the other, the, 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 the norm before, where you have lobbyists that be carrying about uh, one billion, two billions, and they start dictating to you when you get into office what you should do. This is the kind of change we are talking about. So my final question will be, given your professional background, do you aim to continue doing politics and business, or is it now politics all the way? Uh, or like, uh, I, can, I definitely can't uh, leave on politics. That's what we're trying to change. Some people have entrenched their life on politics and politics alone. I have my own business. If I finish my time, run my time properly, show them that it's possible, for Amuad of indigenous to have the best of life. And my time is finished when I go back to my business. I have somebody running it for me right now, and it's doing a good job. I just keep an eye on it from time to time, check back to base. Some people are there because they want to die in it. They do. That's the only thing they live for. That's where they make all the monies in their life. So that's why they can kill, they can do a manner of rubbish because of politics. Uh, we need to change that in Nigeria. Okay, we'd love to hear more about your plans if given the mandate, and that will be during our Project Lagos segment. We'll take a quick breather on political political, but don't go anywhere because Project Lagos segment comes up after this break. <laughs> 